Hey everyone, good morning. Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in the small village of Mung Pam, which is in the Mehong San province of northern Thailand. And this village is home to a Karen people community. Today is an extremely special day because my friend Muk and Sikomo, they are going to cook what is one of the national dishes, foods of the Karen people. I believe that's called Kao Bu or Kao Bu. I think I found my new favorite flower. It is a beautiful morning. The entire town in this valley is blanketed in fog and I'm gonna share all of the food with you now. We're getting started cooking. Wake up in the morning, it's already past 7 a.m. But uh, because we're in this valley high in the mountains, in the morning it's just blanketed in fog. And the fog is actually so thick that when I woke up this morning, you could actually feel the moisture in your face. Uh, it feels wet walking through the air. It makes for a beautiful, mystic morning in the mountains in the beautiful village. Uh, we're just lighting up the fire and we're gonna get started cooking. Okay, that's the main dish that we're going to be cooking today. In Thai and in Karen language. Oh, there's a hole in the bottom of the pan. I need just a cup of cup. Oh, cup. Oh, I need. Oh, okay. This is for okay. This is sticky rice. Uh, that's going to be steamed, but for a different dish called kao. Kapuk. Another dish. Okay, so that's the. That's the first dish that's going on because we need to steam the, the sticky rice first. There's a whole plate of white and uh, black sesame seeds which are going to be toasted and that's going to go together with the sticky rice that was steamed already. Okay, she's just going to toast off those sesame seeds. Those are some beautiful sesame seeds too. You can tell how homegrown, unprocessed they are. ได้ครับเนาะสมมุติหน่อยอะไรก็ได้ดีกว่าครับไม่รู้ไม่เป็นไรหรอกคืองานยกด้วยกันใช่ไหมสมัยก็ข้าวหนมเนื้อกับว่
We pounded up the sesame seeds just for about five minutes, then take out the sesame seeds, put the whole blob of sticky rice into the bowl mortar, and then start pounding that together as Mook is just slowly sprinkling in handfuls of the, the sesame seed. Oh, <laughs> Neon, Yeah, it is. It's a lot of strength. I think especially because of that stickiness, that resistance. I think this house, this house, they make it, they make it a lot of here. I mean, that's why they have the, the mortar and pestles here. And he made one earlier this morning, but not from sesame, but from uh, poppy seed. <laughs> Maybe been like <laughs> dough, sticky rice dough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is like karen mochi. This is one way to really wake up and warm up in the morning. <laughs> After about 20-30 minutes of pounding, we have a blob of, it looks and uh, feels very similar to, if you're familiar with mochi, uh, but this is karen style, the sticky rice pounded, the black sesame seeds pounded, and so that, so far that's all that's in it. Sticky rice, sesame seeds, and a little bit of salt. You're left with this incredible, just, yeah, really like mochi blob of pounded sticky rice dough with uh, the black sesame seed just pounded and folded within it. And then the other family where we went to go pound the, pound it, they gave us a sample of their, the one that they pounded with poppy seeds. So two different versions. If you want, you can eat it just salty and normal like this, or it's also common to eat a little bit sweet with condensed milk and um, cane sugar, cane sugar which they make here, which they grow here, and then made into a, a block of fresh cane sugar. The flavor of the black sesame seed is what just makes it. And then that really elastic -y, gummy texture to wrap it up together. The common way to eat it is to take a bite now of the, the sticky rice dough. Then you pick up the hardened block of cane sugar and make a little bit and then mix it together in your mouth. Oh wow. Oh that is delicious. The cane sugar, this is natural cane sugar, it has an amazing caramel taste to it. And then as you mix it together with the doughy sticky rice in your mouth, it sweetens your mouth. Um, it almost has the texture of chewing gum but then starts to dissolve in your mouth. And then the last method is with condensed milk, which might be a little bit of a more modern approach. That is good too, but I like the palm. The, I, like, I like the cane sugar better, the more natural caramely taste, or I just like it pure straight. That is hearty though. So, yeah, that will, if you keep on eating that, you will get full. Okay, next up, this is the one with poppy seeds. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that one is good too. A different fragrance, smoky, aromatic. We're gonna get started next on one of the ultimate Karen foods. First step, they added rice. Uh, that's regular rice, but mountain, Karen mountain rice. And then also a bowl of bamboo shoots goes into the, the boiling water. Wow. This is gonna be one of the ingredients, a tree stump. I'm not totally sure what it is. I think it's a type of palm, palm tree stump. Maybe a heart of palm? Um, and it is fishtail palm. I was suspecting it was a fishtail palm tree. Uh, so we're gonna eat the, the heart of the palm that's gonna go into it. Okay, good. She's taking the fishtail palm tree stump and slicing out just the heart of it, but you have to chop off the outer skin. And then something that you have to do is kind of test it to see where it starts to get soft because the higher you go up on the tree, the older it is, and therefore the less tender it becomes and uh, it's unedible. It's just like a, I mean, it turns to a tree, but you, what you want is the younger part and you have to, she just has to kind of chop it to feel the texture of it to see if it's chewable, if it's edible. Uh, but mostly we want that heart at the bottom portion of the tree trunk. Okay, taste the very, very heart. This is almost like shreds of the, the heart of that palm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's just like silky, buttery in your mouth and sweet. And then she's just chopping it into pieces, but you have to immediately soak it in water or it starts to brown. Oh, no. Okay, and now in goes the fishtail palm. You have to keep on boiling the rice mixture until it starts to thicken. Um, and that's how you know it's cooked. And also the starch is starting to be released. Yeah. And so it's turning into a thicker porridge. Also what's gonna go into this is some pickled and then dried mustard greens, color and mustard greens, uh, plus some pork, plus a type of flour, which I believe is a type of uh, 
Uh, it's a type of flower, which I believe in English is called Isodon turnifolius. Um, and so a handful of those go in. Oh, banana like gum? And then there's another flower which is green, which is similar, but I think it's different. And they said it has a really strong aroma, um, and it smells like a, a magnified coriander. Okay, come. I just love the use of chunky herbs and spices in Karen cuisine. Oh, it's ready. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. She tosses in all that herb mixture, uh, gives it a quick stir, boils it only for another 30 seconds, and then it's done off the fire. And so that's going to be more like aromatic herbs that go, it's really going to be herbal. Now that the kabu is ready, uh, she's going to make a chili dip using karen chilies, using garlic, tomatoes, uh, fermented soybeans, some of the isodon turnifolius flowers, and coriander. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The roasted chilies go in, the roasted garlic, salt, pound that down, and then she added a handful of the isodon turnifolius leaves, which have an aroma like lemongrass oil, but even stronger. To a now fermented soybean. Okay, come. going to be my first time to ever taste this dish, uh, but I can already guarantee you that it's going to be one of the most comforting, one of those most warming dishes, one of the dishes that you want to be eating when it's cold and you're in the mountains like we are right now. <laughs> There's the kabup that they made, and then there's another one that another auntie made earlier this morning, uh, which is similar but a different. I think that one is actually made with chicken and also with a uh, type of kale pounded up in there, and that's why it's green in color. But they said you can, I mean, you can use a variety of different seasonal vegetables in the kabup together. But I think probably the most unique part about this entire dish and experience that would be totally different from any other culture that I've seen is that. It looks like a porridge, 
it feels like a porridge. It's the texture of a porridge, and yet it's not eaten as a porridge. It's eaten as a main dish. So you eat it with a plate of rice. You have a plate of rice and you use that almost as a gravy, as a sauce. And so that's totally unique. That's something that I have not come across in another culture, in another community uh, within Thailand. And the mustard greens are in there. I'll add a little bit like that. Um, and before adding any ingredients or chasing with herbs, I'll just try it on its own first. All the different ingredients come together. You've got the flavor. Well, first of all, you really notice the flavor of those herbs and the flowers, which just power that entire dish. The rice uh, has become a, yeah, like a thick, thickened sauce and gravy. And then every now and then you get bites of meat, you get bites of, I had a really sweet bite of the heart of palm, which is incredible. Like the ultimate herbal, porridge, but gravy. That chili dip, which also I cannot wait to try. And you can kind of mix that around. You can get that into your porridge, into the cobble, into the your rice as well. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh man, that just bumps up. You taste the smokiness of the chilies and the garlic and the tomato, the coriander in there and especially that tuanel, the fermented soybean, which just gives it a boost of umami. That combination is perfect. And then we gotta try one more version, uh, chasing it with leaves, with lettuce, and then with also those uh, flowers. Mm. Let's explore the three different types of flowers. This one, they said is kind of spicy. Um, and then we've got this one, they said is really strong in taste. I'll try them both. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, that one is like, I don't even know. It almost has a caramel taste to it, but it does have like a warming, kind of a little bit warming as well. And maybe a little bit, not spicy, but it does kind of warm your tongue. Now that I wait a couple more seconds, my tongue is starting to, to heat up. I could feel like a, a little bit of a numbing, a little bit of Sichuan pepper kind of numbing, but then heat at the same time. Like your, your mouth is getting hot. Oh, that's incredible. Oh, I gotta eat a lot more of that. Okay, but next, uh, this other flower. Mm. That's like a, an extra strong, double strength coriander. Lemony and floral at the same time. These flowers and the herbs are really what power this dish, what make this dish special. It truly is an herbal, an herbal blend, a floral blend. Wow, that yellow flower is amazing though. And then finally the, the last flower. This is the flower that was actually added to the to the kapu and also the, the chili dip. The iso, iso isodon ternifolius. Yeah, it does have like a an extra strong lemongrass oil taste to it. Okay, next up I'm gonna try the other the other one. Uh, which is vegetables inside and I believe chicken. And also the banana, banana stock, I believe. That one has some kind of a, a little bit more of a acidic sour component to it. Or that might be because my mouth is just going through a whirlwind of flavors and salivas from all those flowers. And I desperately have to chase that bite again with those yellow flowers. I'm gonna double up on this one. <laughs> yeah, first it tastes almost like a, like you're eating kind of like chrysanthemum almost. Kind of that slight natural floral caramel taste to it. And then in a couple seconds from now, I'm just gonna have this fire, but not chili, but fire in a similar way as chili kind of burns your tongue and mouth. It's incredible, with a tingle as well. That is amazing. Never had this before, and it's just blowing my taste buds. Take two of those flowers, and it really does feel like Sichuan pepper. My whole mouth is tingling, my tongue is tingling now. Oh, and drink a little water, it's almost like fizz. Oh man, I think I found my new favorite flower.
cannot resist this opportunity to add a few more of those flowers on top. Wow. It is an experience in your mouth and they're starting to build now. Okay, and this is uh, another dish that was made in another house. Pickled bamboo shoots along with pork and you can see chilies in there. You can see some herbs and flowers um, and maybe lemon basil. Mm. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, and those are pickled bamboo shoots. So you have another dimension of fermentation, salty acidity. That is incredible. There are so many things going on in my mouth right now. Mm. And I think that along with the, the amazing flavor of this food, really the most unique thing that sets it apart is the method in which it's eaten. Ah, it's been an amazing morning, an amazing time in Mung Pam village, hanging out with Muk and Shikamo. A huge thank you to them for uh, hosting us here, for cooking for us. And Muk does full tours of her village here, where you can come to her village, you can stay in the village, uh, you can learn about the Karen culture, food, arts, uh, clothing, uh, hiking. We did some trekking as well. I'll have her link in the description box below. But when you're in Mehongsan, definitely contact her. They're so cool. They will take care of you. Their hospitality is incredible and you'll get to learn so much about the amazing Karen people. Oh, and also remember to watch uh, more of the videos. We filmed some other videos in this village as well with Muk and Shikamo. So be sure to check out those videos as well. And I want to say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, uh, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon and that way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Mehongsan in Northern Thailand and I'll see you on the next video.